Hey guys, Jamie here, and today I'd like to make a video about UVing in Maya 2018. So, before I start, I'd like to mention that I'm using an educational version of Maya 2018. This video is not monetized, there's no money being made for this, everything is educational, everything is just for the purposes of learning. So, with that aside, we can just jump right in. So, we have our grid here, if you remember from the last video, I went over the basics. I was going to go into a modular building, um, how to build modular walls and whatnot, but I think it'd be important if we learned UVing before we did that, just so we can apply procedural textures to our mesh once it's UV'd. Um, if none of that makes sense, it will very shortly. So let's just jump right into it, UVing. So what UVing is, is taking, uh, let's just start with the cube. Uh, it'll look pretty familiar. So we have this cube here and it is in three dimensional space, X, Y, and Z, three axes. You see that, but when we UV, um, it is, if you go to UV up here, UV editor under the modeling tab, make sure it's under modeling, UV, UV editor, we're gonna get this if we click on our object. So uh, this is a 2D representation of this Let's see if i can uh, yeah that works all right so uh sorry if my lips smack or whatever if it makes annoying noises i know everybody always gets mad about that in tutorial videos but i'm going to try to avoid that so we have this cube here and it is already uv um it kind of doesn't uving is um it's a bit of a complex topic i can show you how You'll kind of understand the why and all that as we're going along and what's actually happening. I'll try to explain it the best I can. So, yes, it's UVing is a 2D representation of the geometry of your three-dimensional object. So, you can see all the faces are here. If I go into face mode in here, um, you can see which ones I highlight. I will highlight on the three-dimensional object and whatever ones I highlight on here will highlight on the two-dimensional object. So it tells you it is the corresponding face. So uh, if you remember in grade school or when you were younger, uh, they had you make a cube and uh, they probably gave you this. And they're like, oh, okay, cut this out and um, fold it. And you can fold it to make uh, this. So I hope that once I realized that it kind of blew my mind and opened the gates for um, what UVing actually is. So um, yeah, it's just a 2D representation of a 3D object. That's probably the best way I can explain it. That's why I said it three times. So uh, let's actually start UVing. Um, what I like to do, if yours doesn't look like this blue here, um, it starts on default here. This is my 2018. Uh, there are some different things like your mesh did not turn blue in the old one in 2017, but it's just a minor change. Um, one thing I like to work with. So when we're UVing, um, we need to, um, our faces have to be as accurate as possible in our 2D as in our 3D space going into our 2D space. So. Uh, what I can do here, I'll, I'll give you a representation of this, or um, a demo. So if we go over here, we have this checker map. Uh, this it was in 2017, but it was a lot nicer to look at. I'm not a fan of this black and white. It's a little hard um, for the eyes, but we got to make with, with, what's, with what we have. Make do with what we have. That's what it is. All right, so you can see this checker box is applied to our entire mesh and they are all perfect squares that's what we're really looking for we're looking for perfect squares because uh these imagine these as small images uh each square is just a small image small square image and it holds the information for the texture that will be applied to this object so um i'll show you i'll give you a better um idea of what's going on here so if I just grab this face and I tweak it in here, see, this is a direct, these are the exact same. So the, um, the 
X and Y ratio are perfect um, demonst or they're perfect from our 3D object to our 2D object. But if I were to make our 2D object, if I right click and went to UV, um, it's pretty much like vertex mode, but it, it only controls the UVs. If we actually did go to vertex, uh, it does, uh, it, it ends up moving vertices that are connected to the selected vertex. So we're not gonna do that. If I just go to UV and I click this one, I click this one and I make, I'm making this face longer. So see, I'm making it into a rectangle now. And uh, to see that better, we have this here. So you can see it's a full rectangle here. And you see that we don't have those perfect squares anymore. We can use this as a reference. Uh, they should be lining up. And this means that when you apply your texture to this face, it's going to be stretched in the Y, in the Y axis. So uh, that is what we need to always look out for to make sure our UVs are square, perfectly square. Uh, they usually start off like that once you start doing projections. And um, I'll show you what projections are right now. Uh, let's actually mess this cube up a bit. Uh, I'm going to go into object mode. I like to keep the checkerboard on when I'm UVing for the most part. Sorry if it's annoying, but that's just how I work. So if I stretch this whole object, you see we're getting major stretching in these, um, these squares. We're not getting it on this side because, as you can see, when I stretch this out, it's really not affecting um, the height or width dimension of this face. So it's only affecting the ones here. They're the only ones getting manipulated. So uh, the way we would fix this, say we had a crate and we're like, oh, well, I guess my crate's stretched. Like, I don't really know what to do. So this is when we would actually start manually UVing. So let's say, uh, let's go to face mode. And I want this top face here. I'm going to click that. And I want to make a projection for my UV editor. So basically what I'm doing, um, I'm going to find the best angle to, um, in a sense, take a screenshot of the faces I'm trying to UV. Um, but you're not actually taking a screenshot. It's kind of hard to understand. I'll just show you. So if I were to click on this top face, go to UV, and uh, we have different types of projections here. We have um, an automatic uh, that is useful. I'll go into that later probably. Uh, cylindrical, planar, spherical. I'm really always just going to be sticking with planar or cylindrical. Um, I'm not really, I don't really often use spherical. Uh, if I use a sphere, I usually stick with the UVs that it was generated with. Um, there are exceptions, but I'm not going to go into it. So we have this planar projection here. So uh, we can just click it, but it will just take a snapshot from the axis that we last used or that we last projected with. So if we've never used it before, we want to go into our dialog box here. So click this box. We're going to get planar mapping options. And in here, uh, I'm going to set it to, I'm just going to reset it, see what it looks like. So what I like to do is I go to, I like to stick with bounding box. And uh, this is when you should really know your X, Y, and Z. So uh, remember X is red, Y is green, and Z is blue. And uh, remember whatever X or whatever handle you have selected is yellow. So that's why that's green now. Um, so we, we know the best angle to take a snapshot from would probably be from the top down if we were taking a straight on image of it. So that would be the Y axis. So if I just went to Y axis and I hit apply, we're going to get, uh, it's going to, if you see in this, we just made, uh, we took a snapshot of that face, but you can see that it's a square, but what we have here is a rectangle and we're also getting that skewing, uh, where there are all these little rectangles. We don't want that. Uh, that's why we want to, before we project, we want to keep image width slash height ratio. So uh, if I click on that and I hit apply, I'm going to get perfect squares here. And perfect squares are what we're looking for. Uh, if I, I can just, um, but if I went to this face and I was like, 
Okay, now I want to do this one. You're like, um, okay, what is going on there? And that is because we projected from the Y axis to take a picture of a face that is facing the X axis. So it's not really going to work. So if we go to X axis, I can hit apply and we get this face here and I'll show you, we get these perfect rectangles. They're perfectly to size with, uh, with the object that we had that with the object that we have. Uh, so here we go. Most of these, these two end ones don't really need to be fixed. We can just leave those. Uh, so I'm going to project again from the Y. I'm going to make sure I do this and just hit apply. I like to do it instead of project because, um, a project just closes the dialogue and I like to, uh, I, I UV from all different angles all the time. So, uh, I can do that and we can see this is the X again. Uh, it's facing the X direction, X axis, apply. And, uh, you see, we have perfect squares all around. Looks really good, but we have in here these faces ended up being, if I go to UV shell, sorry, um, hold right click, excuse me. Yeah. Okay. Hold right click, go to UV shell. And we can click this one here. Uh, the red ones are, it's like a flipped projection. It is essentially just negative, like it's opposite. So what I can do with that, uh, I want to go over, where is my shelf? Did they update this again? Uh, view. Oh, okay. That was pretty dumb. Uh, okay. So I'm here. I didn't realize that the UV toolkit does not stay attached to the UV window. Um, how like that. Yeah, that's how I like it. Okay. So if that doesn't come up, we have this, uh, tools under tools. We have hide UV toolkit, show UV toolkit. And, uh, basically I like to keep open the unfold and we can, we'll see what else we like in here. Oh, I didn't even, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of tools in here that I haven't used and ones that I have used, but I haven't um, seen where they are yet. But um, we're not going to deal with anything too advanced. Just open up your unfold here. And I believe your... Um, transform? Yeah. All right, so... Um, we have this here. We can open up our transform and our unfold and just scroll down. So it's all one area. I like to, uh, if we, we have this flip option. So if I go to my UV shell, uh, I believe I turned something on by accident. Um, sorry. I turned on C U V something. Shell borders. Yeah, buddy. There we go. All right. So don't ever turn that on. Whatever that is. I don't even, don't even talk about that. All right. So we have this flip button here. I'm going to hit that and it's just going to flip our UV to the proper coordinate. And if you remember from our last video, G is last tool used. Even in the UV editor, I can hit G. We want to make sure these are all blue. If we have them and they're red, then it's just not going to work. So uh, I'm going to go into sewing now. So when you have uh, an object like this, this is completed. This is UV'd. And, uh, but at every, every face is its own island. So for the most part, we want to get islands that would connect, um, touching each other pretty much like, uh, connecting at an edge because where an edge meets another edge, such as here, our texture will wrap around that. But if they are separate UV islands, um, there may be a bit of a problem. 
slapping them together because if you have bricks or something and um, let's look at this so see these are not lined up here uh, we have the square it's above this one uh, if we were to lay out bricks it would not look uh, like it's just a cohesive brick pattern but if I go into edge mode here and I select the edge that I want to merge and I hold uh, shift and then right click and I like to do move and sew edges. So that um, there's a bit of skewing there. I'll talk about that in a second. So now we've connected. I'm just going to grab this zoom in. We've connected this edge. So now you see no matter where I put it, it's going to just properly wrap around that corner. Just like that. If I make it smaller, it's kind of easier to see. Smaller is less resolution and bigger squares. And we can see that it perfectly wraps around that corner. Like a conveyor belt almost. So I'm going to resize that. A lot of uh, what you want to do in UVing, you want to make sure that each face is to scale with um, with its real three dimensional version. So you see when we uh, when we put these together, I'm gonna undo that. Uh, where are you? There we go. I'm gonna turn off the checkerboard. It's kind of annoying right now. But so you see, I have this square here, and we can see that um, if I highlight this one edge, it's gonna tell me it's corresponding edge there, and we can see that it's not, if we were to butt these up together, we want it to be the exact same size here. And you see, it's a bit of a hard thing. Like we could like try and figure it out. Um, it's just, I don't know. It's not something that uh, you can, you can do that if you want. If you want super precise UVs, then uh, we're going to use a lot of snapping tools. So what I can do here, uh, I know that I, I just want to, I need to pick uh, either these small squares or my rectangles are going to be my base of uh, what I'm uh, creating. No, it should work. Okay, yeah. Uh, let's just, we'll just size these two up. So if I start scaling... Uh, I'm just going to eye this one. I know I just said don't do that, but uh, we're just going to eye it for now. Uh, on more complex objects, which I'll do a demo of after, uh, you'll see where I'm implementing these and why it doesn't matter and where it does matter. So essentially, we, wanna, we want to scale these up together just because they are uh, pretty much the same face just on opposite ends of the object. It's uh, this face and this face. So if I do this and um, I see that I have, um, we could actually just start, sorry, we could start by just sewing all the long ones together. So click on this, remember uh, uh, hold shift, right click, move and sew edges and they're just going to sew to each other hit g oh no uh you can click this and then hit g for your last tool used i can see there's these are the corresponding edges it'll just snap right to it then snap right to that and they are all connected now so if i turn that uh this unsightly thing on we can see that it's just perfectly wrapping around each part of the mesh here but not on these faces because these are separate islands uh what we want to do for that we size these up a bit and now i want to choose where i'm going to put this so if i just go here i can see that this edge is that edge so if i just do that move and so uh, i managed to scale it almost perfect so we look and there's not um, let's just, I'll show you if I had this like really small and I was like, oh, okay, let's move. And so then we're going to get that. We're going to get some skewing there, but I managed to get it the proper size. Almost. 
it is the exact size of this face because I scaled them together. They were projected together. And, um, but I want to do this. And one thing we can do, um, it'll, it'll do the, the tiniest amount of distortion to this face. But if we actually just went to align and snap, uh, and I went to my UVs and I grabbed all of these ones in this line, there's four here. Uh, let's see, I've never used it in 2018. That worked. Let's go in for the, the replay. Yeah, see, tiniest bit of movement there, but we can see when I hit, I'm, I'm control setting when I do, when I go back. So align. And you see we get that, that bit of a snap there. Now all four of these UVs are the exact same. We snap to the left on this side, which means we've stretched the face to more of the left, but in a very minute way, you're not going to notice. But we can just do the same thing to this side. Uh, click that. And there you go. That is UV'd, properly UV'd. Um, it has the checkerboard. Ready to go. And I could apply a texture to this. I'm not going to go into that. I like to keep this short. The other one was a little too long. My last video. It was too quiet. So I hope this one is a lot louder. So uh, yeah. We can just grab this as a single shell now. Because it's all connected. And we can scale it up and down. Uh, just imagine. Oh hello. Just imagine. Uh that this is working yeah just imagine this is a sheet of paper or this is a an image file this each one of these quadrants is just an image file and in the image file you're going to have textures here you could have just like um leaves and then all the leaves would just be applied to uh wherever this uv takes up um it's kind of hard to visualize. I'll go into it in the next in the next demo while I do a complex object, but I'll start with a finished object that is UV'd, and I'll show you uh, really the the extent of um, of like taking starting with the object UVing, and then um, understanding UVs when it comes to textures. So uh, yeah, I'd like to stop here. There's not any anything else that I'd like to say about this. But yeah, so that's properly UV'd. And if I had like a bunch of these and they were all like part of some, uh, like it was an object, it was like a three piece object. Um, when I duplicate an object that's UV'd, I'm going to get um, the exact same UVs again. And because this is smaller, and it has the exact same size of UVs. It's going to be smaller squares because um, this is a bigger object. And um, if you want more resolution, then it has to be bigger in your UV editor. But because it's a smaller object, it takes up this same amount of resolution. But it takes up less world space, which means that uh, you can condense more information into it. And uh, that's something, yeah, I might, I'll just run over that. Uh, Texel density, uh, Texel density, however you want to say it. Uh, it is uh, when you have multiple objects in a scene, you want their squares to be corresponding, like the size of them, or else you're going to get a ton of resolution here, and it's going to be um, you're going to get some anti-aliasing effects, aliasing effects. Like um, this might look super sharp, and then you have like a um, like a, a crappy. Uh, lower resolution here and it's just it's going to break the immersion of um, of the player so we want to make sure our objects uh, if we have multiple objects pretty much every object in our scene should be the exact same textual density so i'll go over that um, i'm just going to do it with i'm going to delete this object we're just going to work with these two i'm going to turn on my my uh, soft wireframe or whatever it's called and uh, so I can see the wireframe without being without having it selected. And um, so these share the exact same UV space. You see, I click this one, shift click this one, and this gets a darker blue. 
that's because we they're uh, overlapping. So if I put a window here, uh, because they're sharing the exact same UV space, the window would show up here. But uh, that's a problem with UVs. Um, you don't, uh, if you want things to be unique, they can't be overlapping. That's only the bad part, unless you're vertex painting. And um, I'm not going to go into that. That's in Unreal. You can look up that up if you want. But um, yeah, so if I wanted these to have separate things on them, um, I could just move the one UV shell. But it all needs to be condensed within this like one quadrant. There are all of these. There's a multitude of quadrants here. We don't want that. We can only have it on one. So everything needs to fit in here like some uh, some Tetris kind of thing. And uh, so we'll go back to textual density. Uh, we have this one, and we're gonna we're gonna try and scale it down as best as we can to try and match uh, what kind of textual density we have on our other object. I've already made it a bit bigger, so probably want somewhere around that, that. And yeah, so, and now you see that it's taking up a lot less UV space. I have more freedom to just move this around. And then I have these two. We could call it one object if we click them both and combine. Uh, one object, one UV set. And uh, they can have their own, like if I put the window here, if I draw the window on, it's not going to draw into this one because they're not overlapping. But if I had this and I had it like this, where it's like, uh, let me turn this off. Come here. Uh, if I had it like this and they're overlapping, that means whatever one is on top in a way, um, is the one that's going to have the texture applied to it. No, no, they'll, they'll both have the exact same texture applied to them that is taking up this space in the image. And we don't want that because um, if you put like um, nuts and bolts on this face, it's going to end up in parts of these faces if they if it falls under that, which is something you really don't want. Uh, you can overlap your UVs like if they were the same size again. If it's the same object, um, uh, you probably want to do that for a mobile game just to uh, save texture space. But uh, yeah, that's that's majority of everything that I want to go over. Uh, we went over just what UVing is, uh, how to UV with planar projections, then textile density, and uh, I believe that was it. And a bit of this st stupid toolkit that falls away. All right, so, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll have another video up quick. It's going to be uh, just you being a complex object. I have a watchtower, and I'll also run over, um, like, the end of the pipeline, like, what UVing, what the product of UVing actually is. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and um, 